Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So we are continuing on my month of kind of exploring a little bit more in the romance genre. It's February and yeah, seasonally appropriate. I talked about that kind of in my goals at the beginning of the year that I wanted to do a little bit more seasonal content. So I've got some non-romance stuff mixed in this month, but you will be seeing a lot of videos about romance. And uh, yeah, today I thought we would do where I would recommend people start with romance. This is going to kind of be my overall paradigm for this. I really want to make this a approachable, not just for people who are super into romance, but you know, if you like romance, you'll kind of hear what some of my favorites are and sort of my thoughts on this. But if you are not somebody who normally reads romance, I want this month to be helpful to you and giving you some ideas about places where you could start. So yeah, let's get into what I'm going to call my romance recommendations for noobs. So if you're somebody who has not really dipped your toes much into romance, but you're open, you're curious, you think, oh, okay, maybe like with the right book, I might like this. These are going to be recommendations for you. And I'm definitely going to go with an if you like this, then you'll like potentially this type format. So grab some popcorn and let's settle in. So this is for my romance noobs out there. So let's start with sort of like low hanging fruit, which is if you already know that you like women's fiction or chiclet, I hate both of those terms. I find them very kind of condescending and whatever, but you know what I mean. Books that are very focused on like a single woman usually who's like trying to find love and also like trying to figure out, it's sort of like almost like a coming of age novel, but for a grown ass woman. Woman, or is basically what these novels are. So there's a lot and I should also say they tend to be sort of in the vein of a romantic comedy, right? Like if you like movies that are romantic comedies, these are the that genre kind of caters to that taste. So there were two suggestions that I have if you like chiclet. The first is Julie James. So I've talked about Julie James quite a bit. I she in terms of like her actual writing style, I think she has one of the nicest writing styles of people writing today in romance. It's very kind of like clear clean, all that stuff. What I really love about her work is that it's always, like, the heroines are always really smart. They, like, have their shit together, and they are, like, very career-focused. So all of the books that I'm recommending are in her U.S. Attorney slash FBI Office series. I'll have the official title of that linked below, but I, I just really like those books because the women are so confident, but... And it certainly is a romance, but there's so much about the work and about the family dynamics sometimes happening in those books that I don't think that the romance is like the only thing you're getting out of the story. And so I'm picking her for sort of like an urban setting. Her, uh, her stories are set in Chicago. And then one that I think is even closer to being chiclet, like this really to me straddles the line, is Kristen Higgins. So I've not read a ton of Kristen Higgins. I've read probably five or six, but I really enjoyed what I've read from her. She writes what I really think is right in between chiclet and romance because the romances tend to be pretty slow burning. All of her books are set in rural New England, so it's a little bit of a different setting. And I just think that they tend to be pretty funny. There's a lot of family stuff happening, a lot of friend things and, and careers, and then there's also this romance happening. The other thing I would recommend Kristen Higgins for is if you are not somebody who likes to read explicit sex scenes, she has what I think is called like a closed door sex scenes for all of her stories. And what that means is that exactly that, that the, the bedroom door is closed. So there, there is the lead up to the sex and then there's the discussion after the sex, but you don't have to read any actual sex writing. And I know A, a lot of times that's not done that well, but B, some people are just not comfortable reading that, which is fair enough. So um, I think both of those are good kind of bets if you already know you like chiclet. Next up is if you already know that you like a kind of cozy setting. So you like, you know, cozy mysteries or you like someone like Jan Karen, you, you like that sort of small town feel feel. There's a ton of small town romance. If you like that kind of setting and you've not read romance, like you're really selling yourself short because there is just so, so much of it. And there, it, it tends to be, there's a lot of really like good small town romances being written. I'm going to recommend two of my favorites who I think are 
again, there's still definitely romances, but I think there's something else that could draw you in if you're not a big fan of romance. So the first person I would recommend for that is Susan Mallory. So I started reading her because I saw somewhere someone mentioned that she was kind of similar, like that her books reminded them a little bit of the Gilmore Girls, and I am obsessed with the Gilmore Girls. I love that. And if you love the Gilmore Girls, you should absolutely try reading either Cozy Mysteries or just like generally like small town romance, whatever, because yeah, you get like all the quirky townspeople and stuff. But Susan Mallory's Fool's Gold series, I think is really well done in terms of, it is formulaic. I mean, all genre fiction is. Mysteries are formula. I mean, don't I don't consider that to be a valid critique of genre. If you don't like tropes, then why are you enjoying inter any entertainment? Because all entertainment uses tropes. Anyway, that's a side rant. So her, her books are quite formulaic, and the more of them you read, the more you'll definitely know what's happening in the formula. But the townspeople are really fun. Like, there's a nice sense of community. The further you get in the series, I'd say about the between, like, the sixth-ish book and the fifteen-ish book, did I say that right at all? I don't know. That's where she really hits her stride. And I think that's where like the town is really well developed and the characters are interesting. It's a little less angsty by then. And in general, I just think that tends to be the, the kind of bright spot of that series. But um, I just think it's a really good one. So the Fool's Gold series from Susan Mallory, I like. It also, it has sex, but it's not like over the top. Um, likewise for Shannon Stacy, it is something that does have sex, but it's not over the top. And her, so Fool's Gold is set in California. And then Shannon Stacy has, I forget what the town's name is, but it's a whole series um, the, with the Kowalski family, basically. And it's set in rural Maine, and I think also maybe Vermont. I don't totally remember. It's been a while since I've read those, but there's this little town and it's a similar thing. It's a cozy setting and I like Shannon Stacy quite a bit. I think both she and Susan Mallory have what I would describe as window pane type prose, which means it's very clear, it's very clean, not beautifully written or anything, but it doesn't, it's not purple prose, it's not over the top. So I think both of those are very friendly points of entry if you like kind of that cozy setting and are inter interested in a small town type romance. I think both of those are good places to start. A a runner up here would be uh, Jill Chavez has a whole series of books set in I forget what the town's name is but it's in rural Washington state so I mean that's another there's a ton of, of pretty well written um, small town romance so there's a lot of places to start if you like that cozy setting so my next kind of category is if writing quality is really important to you when you're reading so I say this because and, and that can sound sort of like it can either come off as sounding like, well, of course I care about writing quality because like I ha who doesn't care about writing quality? Or it could come off as like kind of snooty, I guess. But the reality is, is writing quality does really matter to some people. And I, I included myself in that up through when I was probably until I was about in my early 20s. If something wasn't well written, I really struggled to get through it. And it's not to say that most romances are not well written. I guess what I mean is that in most genre fictions, the writing quality is not the most important part about that genre's kind of like tropes, right? In contrast, the the literary fiction genre, writing quality is probably the most important part of that genre. So, but for like romance, for mysteries, for sci-fi, for a lot of other genres, the writing quality is not the most important. But if you're somebody who really needs that writing quality to get through, my number one recommendation for you really is Courtney Milan. Now, everybody I'm mentioning on here, I think, let me double check here. Yeah, everyone I'm mentioning on here, I think actually does have a pretty nice writing quality that they're at a minimum just clear writers. They aren't writing purple prose. I don't like purple prose. But Courtney Milan to me writes in terms of just her actual like style and her ability to communicate emotions and thoughts and everything that's happening in the book. I think she writes as well as most mainstream general fiction, right? Like her books are as well written to me as a, I mean, she's she's not like a Toni Morrison or whatever, right? Like she's not like writing some sort of like beautiful lyrical whatever, but I do think that her writing it can be beautiful and it can be lyrical at moments. It's certainly as good as something like, I don't know, The Help or something kind of like, um, like a book club pick, right? 
um, where the writing, it, it does have some aspirations to having some level of style. I think she certainly clears that bar. And um, in general, I think her plots tend to be a little bit more sophisticated. The themes, the motifs, all of that tend to be a little bit higher brow than what you tend to get in this genre. So if writing quality really matters to you, I would suggest starting with Courtney Milan if you're interested in, in getting into romantic fiction. She also writes historicals, so they don't tend to be, not that there are not erotic historicals, but they're not like over the top with that. So again, if that's a barrier to entry, not a huge part here. I should say, the reason that I keep bringing up the sex thing is that I know that that is a huge barrier for some people with romance. They feel like, oh, this just, it's basically porn. That's sort of the critique a lot of times romance gets. And I guess what I want people to know is while in a lot of romance, sex certainly is a part of the plot, if it's a well-written book, the sex is about developing, it moves the plot along and it develops the characters, right? So I'm trying, I try to pick all people who I feel like that is true of their sex scenes where they're there, but they're not, I don't think over the top. Like I don't think, I don't think they're gonna make you too uncomfortable if you're somebody who watches, you know, most cable television. Like I don't think that it's anything like too crazy. Maybe the most radical thing is that these are books where women's pleasure is valued. That's probably the craziest thing about these sex scenes is that there is a premium placed on the woman's pleasure. Radical I know. But anyway, so this is not like HBO where it's like very usually where it's very like objectifying of the women. Like it's a very Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling at this point. So all of that to say, I know that sex part of romance can be a real barrier to entry for some people. So I wanted to pick all people who I don't feel like, if you're somebody who watches cable television, that the sex that's involved shouldn't be anything crazy to you. Um, so that's my disclaimer for all of these. All that to say, Courtney Milan is another person who I would say, her. The, there certainly are sex scenes, but I really feel like for her that they're moving the plot forward. They're definitely deepening character development. And so I find them to be similar in function to like, I'm trying to think, the sex scenes in any novel that like any kind of like mainstream novel where they're there but they're moving they're doing something in the story that's kind of how i tend to feel about hers so my next category is if you're somebody who likes suspense or mysteries this is probably not a hard one for you to guess but nora roberts is who i would start with for this i just think that she writes some of my favorite mysteries in general and and i i call them mysteries they're usually more suspense than they are mystery which i actually kind of like i really like kind of getting the killer's perspective and kind of like you're triangulating between our hero and the villain like how are they gonna come together? That's what a lot of hers are. And um, I think she does a nice job of incorporating the suspense element into a bigger story where you really care about the characters. There's a lot of like family stuff happening and they're often, these books are often set in small towns. So you're getting the small town element. I just think that her, her standalone thrillers are just really well done. Um, and again, I should probably call them romantic suspense instead of a thriller. But um, anyway, I just think that they're really well done and that's exactly who I would start with if you're interested in suspense and you're curious about romance. So my next one is if you know you like urban fantasy, again this is probably not that surprising, but I would 100% then recommend Alona Andrews. I think she, she to me um, writes as good of urban fantasy as a Jim Butcher does, right? Like the Dresden Files to me, if you like the Dresden Files, you should be reading the Kate Daniels series. And actually I say that a lot of people are, and I've seen a lot of comments from people being like, why are these classified as romances? These aren't romances, this is urban fantasy. These are urban fantasy romances. <laughs> um, people don't like, you know, there's this big stigma around the romance genre in general, you know, because it's one that's by women about women for women in general. You know, anything women like get get marginalized, whatever. That's just a part of it. But that being said, these are romances and they are urban fantasy and they're extremely well done. So if you know you like something like The Dresden Files, if you like that kind of genre, you should 100% give Kate Daniels series a chance. That's where I would start if you're specifically into the urban fantasy. But her other two major series, which are The Innkeeper Chronicles, I think that's a great one if you like fantasy in general, but 
you know, urban fantasy technically. And then um, the Hidden Legacy series is is fantastic. So um, I'd probably, if you like urban fantasy, start with Kate Daniels, but really anything from Alona Andrews is probably gonna, you know, do it for you. Next is if you like steampunk. So I haven't gotten to read a ton of steampunk, but my my favorite steampunk I've read far and away is from this author, and that is Mel Jean Brooke. The Iron Duke series, I just think is a really, really interesting world. It's a very fun take on steampunk. There's zombies, there's dirigibles, there's, you know, steam power, there's everything that you want from, from <laughs> at least that I want from steampunk, but it does have these very strong romantic elements, and um, I think that she is another one who I would say her writing quality is quite high. I think that she writes very well, she writes very beautifully, and um, I just think that that's a really fun kind of adventure series, like it's steampunk adventure romance, and uh, yeah, I love the hell out of it. In theory, we're supposed to be getting a fifth book, but I can't find any details about when it's actually going to come out. It was supposed to come out sometime last year and never did and I've not seen an update from her since like early 2017 about when it was coming out so I hope we get it because the the at least the hero that's supposed to be a part of this one last final book is is a great one so I really hope we get that but anyway that's a side note the Iron Duke series by Mel Jean Brooke that's where I would start if you like steampunk and are interested in romance so number seven is kind of a weird one but I was trying to think of who I would recommend this author to I knew I wanted to include her on this list because I think she could be a really good kind of entry into romance and I decided Decide to go with if you like political intrigue or if you like kind of like series that have a real arc to them where there's some sort of like political machinations happening or where there's real like change in the world happening. I'm going to recommend Nalini Singh. Now Nalini Singh is somebody I've, I've recommended to a few uh, co-workers which is a little awkward because these are probably some of the steamiest books that I'm mentioning in this whole list, but co-workers and friends and stuff and everyone who I've recommended this to has really, really enjoyed these books. And they're very, very well plotted. That's the biggest thing is that I think the plotting in these is really excellent. So this is probably on the more purple end, but I still think that it's well written. And uh, I the the kind of arc that she developed over the course of at least the first cycle of the Psy Changeling series, which is what I'm recommending in particular, I just think is really, really fascinating. Um, that being said, the Guild Hunters series, um, so the Psy Changeling series deals with like shifters, like, and like werewolves, that kind of thing, and um, like people with psychic abilities. So that's, that's the main series I would recommend. I don't like the Guild Hunter series as much, which is more of a archangel and vampire type world, but both of them do still have that sort of like grand, like geopolitical type element to them. So if that's something that you enjoy, if you enjoy sort of like an expansive world that has a lot of like more meta things or like bigger level things happening in them I think she's a great place to start um, as well as if you you know she's also technically urban fantasy so I could put her in with Alona Andrews as well I guess but um, specifically if you like that sort of political intrigue I think Nalini Singh could be a good bet for you and then finally my last category is if you like whimsy now the reason I decided to say this was because a lot of my favorite romances are very light in tone as I was talking about in my know your tropes video about things that I love I tend to like the lighter end of romance um, I tend to like my romance with some humor and just with some self-awareness that sometimes Sometimes the things that are happening in these books are silly and or just like a lightness of touch so I have three three options for you one in kind of each area like major genre area of romance so for historical I would recommend Tessa Dare she actually it's not that she's completely light like there's some angst in hers but I do tend to think that there there's a little bit of um, kind of it's not gonna get too dark in a Tessa Dare there does tend to be some like meta awareness and and just the fact that she's having fun with tropes like I think there's one where she basically is kind of it's sort of a historical take on cosplay right so it's things like that she has I think a lighter touch Jessica Clare who in Paranormals writes as Jessica Sims and would certainly classify as a lighter touch in, in Paranormal as well but Jessica Clare is that her um contemporary name that she writes under and her billionaire series I do think tends to have a lighter touch I think it has some fun with the billionaire tropes and I really resonate with her humor so I find those books to be quite funny I do think that she is by far and away the most the, the most erotic 
writer of everyone I'm going to mention, there tends to be more super superfluous sex in her books than in anybody else I've mentioned in this video. So if that is a is a deterrent, then there you go. Um, just as often that's a, a plus for some people. So there you go with that as well. But I just think she has a really lovely sense of humor that really shines from pretty much anything she does, even if it probably shouldn't. Sometimes it's still funny, um, even in situations where maybe she maybe would like a little bit of a, a more serious tone. She, I think she just can't help kind of having that sort of self-awareness and kind of silliness about her writing, which I like. And then the third in terms of another paranormal um, author who also writes historicals and is just the epitome, like the, the least good writer on this list in terms of just on a technical level, closest to just like kind of silly, like pure silliness is Lindsay Sands. I love Lindsay Sands. Like they're some of my favorite, just like light comfort reads. They're just a ton of fun. She does write historicals and then she also has a vampire series called the Argino series, which I'll talk more about in a different video. But anyway, I think she's another one that if you like a lighter tone, she might be a good choice for you. So I hope those were helpful recommendations if you are curious about romance and have kind of wanted to, to dip your toes in. I think that these are all, like any of the authors on this list, I think could be a good place for someone to start depending on what they're looking for and what they know they already like. So just kind of, you know, if, if this list, like just, just reflect on what on this list you potentially could like and that might be a good place to start for you. Somebody who is gonna like Lindsay Sands may not like Courtney Milan. So I think it's, whenever I'm thinking of like, oh, what would I recommend to somebody who's never tried romance? I do think you have to have some level of kind of understanding of your own pre-existing um, preferences or else you're not gonna have a successful first outing with romance. For instance, I think it's very, not very, I don't think that it's that typical for somebody to pick up a Harlequin category romance and just be like, oh, I love this genre. Maybe, I mean, I'm not saying never, but like in general, I think that's sort of a harder place for people to start at. So, but those are what are typical, right? Like when people think of romances, that's what they think of. So I think that sometimes can be why romance gets a bad rap because people are just not really starting in a place that is setting them up to potentially like the genre. They're kind of starting in a place that will not necessarily um, help them like the genre. So anyway, those are my recommendations for romance noobs. I think that's gonna do it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. Got all that information listed in the description box below. And if you are somebody who already reads romance, definitely let me know if you think that these were on, on point or if you think I was off base or if you have other suggestions you think people would do well to start with. Um, definitely let me know. This is a huge genre, so there's a lot of room for places for people to start. And uh, I don't like, I, I talked about this in my other, my other video, but I'm not someone who likes, for instance, like new adult or YA contemporary romance or whatever. So I didn't include people who are kind of like that. So if you have thoughts, definitely let me know below. But other than that, I think that's going to do it. I hope you're having a really great day and I will just talk to you soon.